Hey guys, what's going on? Coach Andrew here with a video that's kind of off topic for my channel, but I really want to put this out there because I know that there are probably a ton of people who are doing the same thing I was doing like four or five months ago. And right now you're searching Google, you're searching Reddit, you're searching YouTube for information about the ADHD drug called Vivance. And um, I watched probably 10 hours of videos I read stuff on forums. I looked up as much possible information as I could before I went and picked up this prescription and started trying this drug. And um, as of the filming of this video, I have been off of Vivance for almost two months now. I'm gonna get into the stuff that I did and why I did it and what I think actually worked best for me. But first, I'm gonna give you some background on who I am, what I've tried in the past, what's going on with my life going to give you the rundown on everything that happened when I used Vivance and then tell you what I did afterwards and what I'm doing right now to be successful as a small business owner and online entrepreneur all by myself with adult ADHD unmedicated. So I'm pretty sure at this point in my life that I have had ADHD my whole life. I wasn't diagnosed until I was 25 years old, um, but I had teachers in elementary school who tried to tell my parents to get me tested. They didn't want to. Um, and in retrospect, I look back at the rest of my life and I remember myself not paying attention in class, um, hyper-focusing on video games as a young child, you know, being super impulsive. Um, I mean, you can tell just by how I decorate my office that I like to have stimulus. I kind of have a short attention span sometimes, so it's, it's not surprising that at age 25, after trying to build an online coaching business, I, I realized that, man, it's really hard for me to focus sometimes and I don't get things done. So I ended up seeing a psychologist who ran me through some tests, diagnosed me with ADHD, impulsive presentation. And um, from there, I began trying various drugs to fix the problem. So I've worked out my whole life. Um, my diet has not been as impressive as my workout ethic. Um, I eat plenty of the foods that I want to eat. I try to stay healthy most of the time. Um, so as far as like your lifestyle goes, my lifestyle was pretty dialed in. Um, I have a family. Um, at the time I was diagnosed, I only had one child. She was a newborn. But like, you know, my life is not very stressful. I do all right for myself. Um, I don't have depression. I never felt like I had struggled with anxiety, um, but we're going to get into that later because I definitely struggled with anxiety my whole life. I just didn't know it. So, so yeah, I had ADHD. Uh, the first thing that I did when I met with my first psychiatrist was he wanted to put me on Welbutrin, um, which is an antidepressant. And my family has a really long history of depression. Um, one of my family members has bipolar disorder. So there's, you know, some stuff going on there. And I, I didn't want to try that. I didn't want to go down that route. I wanted to treat my, my disease as something different than what my family had. Um, I guess it's just like, that primitive desire to stand out. And the truth was when I went in to get tested for ADHD, I wanted to get diagnosed. I wanted a positive diagnosis because it would explain my problems. It would, it would allow me to continue playing the victim. I'm not gonna preach to you guys about like, you know, go focus harder, go get your life together. Because when you have ADHD, the struggle's real, okay? I know, I have it. But I was definitely looking for an easy way out. I wanted a pill to fix my problems. And that was, that was the main problem. That's why everything didn't work out. So I didn't try Welbutrin. I ended up trying Stratera. I hated it. It did bad things to me. It made me very angry. Then I tried Ritalin. And Ritalin made me emotionless. I felt like a shell. I, I, I felt an increase in focus. Um, Stratera didn't do anything good for me. But Ritalin did help me work better, but I didn't feel emotions. It made me feel really empty, so I stopped. And after that, my psychiatrist was getting frustrated with me, and he was really pushing the antidepressants on me. I read some scary things about SSRIs, and I said no, and I stopped going. So about six or eight months went by, and then I got an ad on Facebook for a study on adults with ADHD. They were testing a new drug. You would either get a placebo, or you would get the new drug, you take it for six weeks, meet with a psychiatrist once a week, give them a report. And, you know, it sounded interesting. So I was like, hey, you know what? They're paying a little bit of money. I'll go do it. I, I really want to learn more about this disease. And I actually love 
science, I'm super passionate about it. So I'll go irritate these researchers and ask them a bunch of questions. So I did that, I drove a half hour each way down to Canton and I did this study for six weeks. I'm pretty sure I got a placebo because the pill did absolutely nothing for me. But at the end, I met with the main psychiatrist at the research center and she prescribed me 70 milligrams of Vyvanse, which is the largest dose. So there was some really complicated stuff going on with my insurance at the time. I was turning 26, um, I was getting kicked off my parents' insurance, and so I had to work all of that out. It took me a while to actually get my hands on the drug because it's expensive as hell if you don't have insurance. But I finally got it, and I started taking it, and the first day that I took 70 milligrams of Vyvanse was incredible. I, I can't even describe to you how amazing I felt. And I felt that way <laughs> because it's, it's, it's kind of like meth. It's like a really light version of meth. And um, that being said, you know, I'm not a chemist. I can't tell you exactly how it works. I read as much as I could and tried to understand as much as I could. But basically, um, that day we went hiking. And the entire time we were hiking, I felt euphoric. I felt like life was beautiful. The woods were beautiful. The trails were beautiful. I could have hiked for 40 miles that day. And I wouldn't have felt how sore my legs were. I wouldn't have felt tired. I probably could have gone without drinking water and I would have been fine. That's how good I felt. But towards the end of the night, around 7 p.m., um, I started feeling kind of anxious, like, like really anxious for no reason. Um, I started like thinking about like money, like do I have enough money? And I started thinking about my fitness, like am, am I working out hard enough? Am I staying healthy? Like and I just started kind of like creating these negative feedback loops, these negative thought patterns. And, um, you know, I was like, I don't really like this. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but I didn't think too much of it. And I ended up going away around like 11 p.m. and I went to sleep. So the next day I took it again. Um, again, I felt euphoric, not as much as the first day, um, probably like 80%, 70% as much. And I actually worked that day. And I got more done in like a four-hour window than I would typically get done in like an entire day. Um, I, I just went, I went down and for the first time in my life, I could stand in front of this computer and I could work for six hours without thinking about anything else other than work. I wasn't thinking about food. I wasn't thinking about going to the bathroom. I wasn't thinking about anything. I was in the work. I mean, you take this drug and it puts you in a flow state. You just in like a half, you have to wait about a half hour for it to kick in and then you immediately go into a flow state. It's incredible, it's incredible. But on day two, after about five hours after taking the pill, the anxiety came back and it came back like twice as bad. And that night I was so anxious that I literally had to stop working. I turned off the lights in my office, I went upstairs and I sat on the couch and I just sat there and like shook my leg for like four hours. I was just like shaking my leg just like staring at the wall, looking at the clock, just like, oh my God, like I felt like the world was falling apart. Nothing was wrong, nothing was wrong. Like my business is fine, my family life was fine, but like I can't explain the physiological or the chemical reasons for why this happens. Um, as far as I understand it, the drug helps your brain create like a surge of dopamine. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong but it basically like allows your brain to better utilize dopamine. And then as it wears off, there's like a severe deficit because your brain hasn't had to make any. And when the drug starts leaving your system, it creates a big deficit. And like towards the end of the day, when the drug is really starting to wear off, the deficit gets bigger and bigger. And that results in anxiety, right? Because when you don't have dopamine, as far as I understand it, when you're missing certain chemicals, you're going to get anxious. You're going to get depressed. And boy, does this drug make me anxious. Now, I did lots of research online. I watched lots of videos, read lots of forums, and a lot of people have this problem. Some people have anxiety, they take Vyvanse, and they can focus better, and their anxiety goes away. Other people like me, a lot of people like me, um, don't really feel like you have anxiety. They take the drug, it helps them focus, but after about four to six hours after taking the drug, you get really anxious. And, um, so what I did on day three was I took a half dose. I opened, I don't recommend doing this. I don't, probably shouldn't do this, but I opened the pill. I poured all the powder out and I divided it in half and I took a half dose 
Um, the focus was just about as strong. It was about 35 or 40 milligrams, by the way. But then towards the end of the day, after about four hours, instead of getting anxious, I got wickedly depressed. Again, I don't know why. I don't know if it's related to the dosage. But whenever I tried a smaller dose, I would get depressed. If I tried a full dose, I would get anxious. Um, but on day three, I was so depressed that night that I literally sat on the floor. I held my one-year-old daughter and I cried for no reason, for no reason at all. I just sobbed. At this point, my wife's getting kind of concerned and she's like, look, you know, is this, is this really worth it? And, you know, I had also read online that like after a week, if you just give yourself time to adjust to it, it gets better. The anxiety dies down and like it gets better. So I was like, I got to keep trying this, Anna. Like, I, I'm going to keep taking it. I'm going to keep seeing what happens because when, when it's working, it's amazing. Like I had gotten more done in that first week than I did in like a month without it. And so I kept trying it. I tried for the next three weeks. And um, by the end of week three, I was getting about six hours of flow state, but I was still having the anxious crash at the end. And by the end of week three, the anxiety was getting so bad that I was feeling it in the mornings before I even took the pill. Like, like the anxiety would last from dinner time until waking up the next morning. And then there would be days, I took, a, I took a weekend off somewhere in there, and that whole weekend I was like a little anxious. Not as much as I was during a come down, but I still felt it. I was like kind of anxious, kind of depressed. And what, I'm, what I was scared of the most about Vivance was that it was creating actual anxiety, that it was creating depression in my brain. Um, because I knew that every time I was focused and the drug was working, you know, for the first four or five hours, that was reinforcing pathways in my brain that helped me focus and helped me work better. And I liked that. But I also knew that at the end of the day, when I was anxious or depressed, those pathways were getting reinforced too. And it felt more and more every day that I took this drug that I was kind of becoming like bipolar, right? That th there was a polarization within me. And there was this really focused, confident self that can go into flow state, but like the anxious and depressed self was also getting stronger. And it was making me feel really conflicted, like really at odds with myself. And I didn't like that at all. So at this point, um, I was no longer able to see the psychiatrist who ran the research clinic. So I went to see my new doctor with my new insurance plan. He referred me to a new psychiatrist and um, <clears throat> I had to wait three weeks to go see him. So <laughs> by the time I saw my new psychiatrist, my third psychiatrist, um, I had already been off Vivance for over a week because I ran out of it. And I met with him and the first thing that he said when I sat down in his office was, did the woman out front tell you that I'm not gonna give you Vivance? And I was like, no, she didn't. I was like, why? And he's like, Vivance is not a good drug. He's like, um, I don't think you have ADHD. I think you have general anxiety disorder based on what you wrote down in this form. All I told him was that Vivance was making me anxious at night and I told him that I have a family history of depression and so he took that as you have depression, you have anxiety, you don't have ADHD. Even though I had been diagnosed by a psychiatrist and a psychologist's assistant at the first place I went to, and I was diagnosed at the research clinic by another psychiatrist, he, without even testing me, decided that I didn't have ADHD and that I had anxiety instead. And he refused to give me Vyvanse and he wanted to put me on an SSRI called Effexor. So I went home, I researched Effexor, it scared the shit out of me, and I said, no, I'm done. I'm done with all of this, I'm not even gonna try it. This stuff is destroying my brain and it's making me worse. Like, okay, I can work for five hours a day really, really well, and then I'm a useless, depressed, anxious piece of garbage in the evenings and at night, and I can't enjoy time with my family, I can't feel satisfied or fulfilled from what I got done because I'm so anxious for no reason, and this is gonna make me hate my life. So I said no. So the good, right? This is my personal experience. If you're researching Vyvanse and you go anywhere on the internet, you will find hundreds, literally hundreds of opinions, and most of them are different. A few people that I read had the exact same experience as I did. Other people had the polar opposite experience. I don't really know what to tell you. I can't tell you how it's gonna work for you. It might be a good solution for you. Just be aware that your expectations probably won't be met in at least one way probably two, three, four, or five, because these drugs do different things to everybody.
Vivance helped me focus for four to six hours a day really, really well. I would take the drug, I would feel like I was on top of the world, I would focus on my work without any interruptions, and I would be super productive, literally in a flow state, like a machine. Then around the five or six hour mark on the dot, every single day, without exception, I would immediately begin feeling anxious, and on the really bad days, I would feel depressed. I'd be so restless, I wouldn't be able to work. It would ruin my evening every single day, and I couldn't enjoy my family. I didn't enjoy watching movies. I didn't enjoy food. Also, Vivance kills your appetite. I, I lost weight. I lost like four pounds um, because you just forget to eat. You don't feel hungry. Um, what else did Vivance do? Uh, it gave me a really dry mouth. Um, other than that, it didn't, there weren't too many other side effects, but the anxiety alone was so debilitating, it just wasn't worth it to me. So here I am. I've had three psychiatrists. I've tried three different drugs, almost four. What did I do, right? What am I doing? I'm working now. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm unmedicated. How am I managing my ADHD as an adult? Well, great question. All of that was just enough. I mean, the Vivance was the straw that broke the camel's back. And I told myself, I'm going to stop trying prescription drugs. Nothing against prescription drugs and nothing against people who use them, but I don't feel like it's a good solution for me. And at this point, I am so scared of them and what they do to me that I am, I'm done trying them. So here's what I did. I bought a book called The 10-Day Detox. It's written by Mark, Dr. Mark Hyman. Um, he wrote a diet plan called The Daniel Plan. You can look that up. But The 10-Day Detox is a little bit different. And basically, me and my wife, for 10 days, ate nothing but vegetables, nuts, and a little bit of meat. We cut out all of our sugar, all of our caffeine. We don't drink, but you're not allowed to have alcohol on this plan. Um, we cut out all of our processed food. We cut out all of our dairy and all of our gluten. So we literally just ate vegetables, drank water, ate some nuts. Uh, you're allowed to have eggs, and we had a little bit of meat. I did that for 10 days. And... At the end of the 10 days, I felt better than I've ever felt in my entire life. Um, I don't take any caffeine anymore. Prior to taking Vyvanse, I was taking 400 to 500 milligrams of caffeine a day. It was like two cups of coffee and a scoop of pre-workout every day, just to get through the day. And I have read that having ADHD makes you highly addictive, and caffeine is one of the many ways you can self-medicate. So I got off of that. Um, I cut out all the sugar, and I felt really good. I was sleeping better than I've ever been able to sleep before. Um, I wake up earlier now. I wake up at like 6, which is earlier than I've ever woken up in my life, and I go to bed at like 11. I feel fantastic. Um, I actually enjoy vegetables now, and I don't really like thinking about sugary food anymore. And to be honest, I focus better. I really do. I really do feel like I focus better. Another thing that I have started using um, since trying Vivance is CBD oil. Now, obviously, I know that this is something that is newer to the marketplace, and with the legalization of marijuana and THC, it's like this craze now, and everyone's trying to sell you CBD oil like it's a magical snake oil that fixes everything. I'm not here to tell you that. Um, I'm just here to tell you that I use it every couple of days. It helps me sleep better, and um, it relaxes me. So when I do feel anxiety, <clears throat> the CBD oil really does help. But that's what I'm doing now. So I'm eating better food, I'm exercising more, I'm getting outside. Um, and now that I'm off of Vyvanse and I don't have anxiety or depression anymore at night, I can do more of the things that I enjoy, which helps me relax even more. So I spend more time with my family, I go to the park, I do really hard workouts, and I feel really good about myself. So <clears throat> if you're gonna try Vyvanse, just go in knowing all of this, Go in knowing that your results could be completely different. Um, it is, I mean, it is a drug that really works, but it has a lot of side effects. That's the bottom line. If you have anxiety, um, just be really careful with it because it really sets things off. I mean, the, the come down is brutal with Vyvanse. It was for me. And I didn't think that I had anxiety prior to using Vyvanse. But I also didn't realize some of the behaviors that I had been doing my whole life, which are symptoms of anxiety. Sometimes I would avoid difficult tasks. I would avoid social situations. I did things that didn't always make sense. 
and I didn't notice it. No one ever pointed it out to me. Um, it was just like ADHD. The, these were conditions that were just kind of hidden to me. And growing up, I thought that I was fine. I thought I was really normal. I kind of thought, honestly, that I was like healthier and better than everyone else. And, and then I hit 25 and 26 and realized like, oh gosh, I'm actually pretty broken and I do some dumb things. So just think really hard about yourself and your conditions. Have some self-awareness. And um, if you're going to try psychostimulants, get a good psychiatrist. Be aware of the things that it does to you. Keep a journal. Every day I wrote down how much I took, how I felt, hour by hour, what was happening. And um, if you have a good psychiatrist, you can go over that with them. And they can really talk to you about these things and help you find something that works for you. If you're like me and you've tried too many drugs and you don't want to try anymore, or if you're hesitant to try in the first place, try fixing up your lifestyle first, right? Try exercising more. Try cutting out sugar. Try cutting out gluten or dairy and all that. I can't tell you which of those made the difference. Maybe they all cumulatively made the difference. Maybe it's all just in my head. Maybe it's placebo. I don't know. I just know that eating healthier and taking better care of yourself and doing things more responsibly really helped me. So I would urge all of you to give that a try before you try Vyvanse. But if you're impatient like me, and if you have ADHD, you're probably impatient, go try the drug first. Just know that if it destroys your life, you can always stop and then try to clean up your diet, try to get exercise, try to sleep better. There's always an option. So anyways, if you have ADHD, welcome to the club. It's super fun. Don't let it control you. Don't let it own you. And whenever you mess up or do something stupid or slack off, don't tell yourself, no, it's because I have ADHD. That's an excuse. And you might be telling yourself, oh, it's not, but it is. Subconsciously, you're using it to play as a victim. And just take ownership of your life, right? It, it does work and it helps and it makes you feel more confident. And I promise you guys are not alone. You can get through this. Um, it's totally doable, all right? Just look at me. So inspiring, right? <laughs> Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you have questions about Vivance, you can leave them in the comments. You can shoot me a message. Um, I'm more than happy to help you guys out answer your questions. I have a limited experience with this drug, only a month, but I did take the highest dose and I have tried others in the past. So um, more than happy to give you my opinions. But anyways, take care you guys. I will talk to you in the next video. If you have questions to ask me about life, if you want me to answer your questions as a coach about life, relationships, self-development, fitness, business, leave them in the comments, shoot me an email. I will gladly answer them in my Ask Coach Andrew series. You can check out my website, andrewwolner.com, to learn more about what I do, what I offer. But in the meantime, go enjoy your life, all right? We'll see you in the next video. Talk soon, guys.